Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really pretty table topper. You might notice during the demonstration that the fabric is different than this. As I was making it, I decided that the fabric I was selecting was not the best choice because the pattern wasn't standing out as well as it should have. So when you are selecting your fabrics, make sure your fabrics have a sharp contrast between each other. Okay, let's get started. You'll need the following supplies. You'll need two different fabrics, fabric A and B. Fabric A, you'll need two-thirds yard. You'll need five ten and a half inch squares and two eleven inch squares. Fabric B, you'll need about a half a yard. You'll need to cut twenty five and a half inch squares. Cotton batting, you will need one and one eighth yard, and fabric for the back, you will also need one and one eighth yard. To cut out your fabric A, make sure your fabric is folded with the selvage edges together. Pull your raw edge that past this first line here on your cutting mat. I refer to it as the zero line. Also make sure your folded edge up here is going straight across on one of the lines. So you're going to cut out this raw edge here and get it straight because when you purchase fabric it's rarely straight depending on where you buy it. So go ahead and trim any jagged edges off. Now don't move your fabric. You're going to move your ruler over to the ten and a half inch mark and make sure it's lined up down here also and then cut. Move your ruler over one more time, another ten and a half inches. That would put you on the twenty one inch line and then do your last cut. Stack your strips on top of each other and pull your selvage edges past this first line over here again. We're going to trim it off. So line everything up and then cut. Then you're going to move your ruler over every ten and a half inches and cut. So you would do your first cut, move it over again ten and a half inches to twenty-one and do your last cut. To cut fabric B, it depends on the width of the fabric that you purchase. You're going to cut three to four strips that are five and a half inches wide. After you've cut your strips, stack them and then cut the selvage edges off and keep moving over every five and a half inches until you have 20 squares cut. On all of your five and a half inch squares, you're going to draw a line on the back side going from corner to corner. So I'll line your ruler up. And you can just use pencil and draw a line through it. Again, do that on all of your five and a half inch squares. Place two of your squares in opposite corners of each other and make sure the lines are going in the same direction. Very, very important. Go ahead and stitch next to the line on this side. The side that's going towards the outside of the block is the side you stitch on. Remember, don't stitch on the line. After stitching, you're going to trim this excess corner off and put your quarter inch line on your stitch line and trim it off and do the same thing on the other side. Put the quarter inch line on there and trim it off. Then take and press these uh, squares here and then open them up and press them on top. So when you're done, your block is going to look like this.
make sure you're pressing the seam towards the outside corner. Take two more of your squares and place them on there. Line them up in the corners and these will overlap right in here. They're supposed to. And line it up again over here. Make sure that the lines are going in the same direction. So go ahead and stitch on this side of the line, on the outside part of the line, all the way across. Then when you're done, you're going to trim the corners off over here. Put your quarter inch line on your stitch line and trim the corners off. And then do the other one. Then press your seams on the back side and unfold and press on top. So when you're done, your block is going to look like this. And this is what it looks like on the back. Take your last two fabric A 12 and a half inch squares and just stack them. Put them on top of each other. You're going to cut them from corner to corner. So line up your ruler and cut them in half. Lay all of your blocks out in this pattern. You've got three of the blocks going this way and then one on each side. Then in your corners you have your half square triangles. Stitch each row together separately. So bring this on top, align your edges, stitch a quarter inch seam along here and then place this one on top stitch a quarter inch seam and you're just going to keep going on down to the second row stitching them together and then of course on down to the last row when you're pressing your seams you want to press each row in a different direction the first row is going this way second row is going this way, third row going this way. Now stitch the rows together. So bring front sides together, match your seams. Make sure that the seam on the bottom is going in the opposite direction than the one on top. And go ahead and put a pin there at each seam to hold it so it doesn't shift out of place when you are stitching. After you've pinned your seams, then go ahead and stitch a quarter of an inch along here. Then add on the last row. Press your seams on the back side and then press them on top. And make sure your seams are evenly pressed in one direction. Now layer your fabrics. Place the fabric for the back with the front side or the pretty side down and you're looking at the back of the fabric. Then place your cotton batting down and then your table topper fabric. Make sure you've got about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric sticking out on all the different sides. Now you need to prepare all the layers for the quilting stitches. So to keep all the fabric layers from shifting apart, either use safety pins and you would spread those out all over the top or you could use straight pins since this is so small. If you only have straight pins, then it should be fine. After you've pinned the top, then you need to decide on a quilt, uh, quilting stitch pattern. If you've never done it before, I'm going to give you some suggestions. You can just do straight lines up and down and then side to side. You can even do them on a diagonal. And there's plenty of diagonal lines on this table topper to follow along. So it'd be pretty easy on this table topper. Or you can use quilting stitches, decorative quilting stitches you might have on your machine. This is a serpentine. 
you still go up and down and then straight across and you can still do the serpentine stitch on a diagonal. I highly recommend you use a walking foot on your machine when you're doing your quilting stitches. This also helps to keep the fabric from shifting apart while you're stitching. It also helps to prevent little tucks in the fabric, which can happen with a regular presser foot. If you don't have one, you can get them at sewing machine supply stores and websites and also on Amazon.com. All you have to do is enter the name of your sewing machine and model and that you would like to have a walking foot. After you have completed your quilting stitches, then you need to trim this excess cotton batting and fabric off the back. So align your ruler along the edges here and begin trimming all of the edges off. If you need instructions on how to put the binding on, then click on the link in the upper right hand corner called Fear of Quilt Binding. For more table linen projects, such as placemats and table runners, go to the green screen at the end of this video and click on the links. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen Enter your email address, click on that little bell so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!